ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय शो यू हैव इंस्पिरेशन वर्क्स टू शो यू हैव अ फ्री स्टाइल सम ऑफ दीज वीडियोस आई एम अबाउट टू मेक अ वीडियो ऑन अ टॉपिक दैट आई डिडंट रियली वांट टू मेक अ वीडियो ऑन And that's because it's one of the most controversial topics in the world today and for the last I could tell you how many years going back to Treta Yuga this thing has been an issue so if we're 5000 years into Kali Yuga and the age before that was Dwapara Yuga which was 864000 years we're going to add this 5000 to the 864000 giving us 800 71,000 years plus whatever time it was in Treta Yuga that Krishna established this thing called Varna Ashram. So first of all, I like to say that Varna Ashram is the English translation of what people interpret to be something called a caste system. Now, let's understand the caste system. Many countries have a caste system. America has a caste system. For example, you have your aristocracy you have your president trumps okay let's put it like this if you want to know who your american royalty is all you got to do is rewind to the tape of bush's funeral a few weeks ago and whoever was sitting in those front rows at that funeral was quote unquote american aristocracy all of those aristocrats are related through blood or through marriage to royal thrones coming out of either great britain France, Spain, or Germany. For example, England right now is being run by aristocrats not from British bloodlines, but from Germany, okay? The whole throne of Great Britain has been taken over by I I I hate to try to pronounce that name. It always slips me. Like Coburg Saxo Coburg or something like that. Uh, you know, when I when I see it written, I'll be able to say it properly. But yeah, basically the people run in england right now are actually vampire bloodlines or rakshasa bloodlines rakshasas in the ancient vedic scriptures are described as man eating shape shifting reptilians okay so they can appear as humans but they are actually and this was before your television was invented this was before the movie they live which is a cult classic it tells you that there were shape shifting people on the planet earth even if as a child like as a child i used to watch land of the lost and they did have rakshasas they called them slee stacks slee stacks were humanoid reptilians for some reason now the veda say that they have the ability to shape shift but i don't want to get too far from the course this video is about the caste system again america has a caste system it's based upon race it's based upon financial status and it's based upon education that's the american caste system okay in india they have another caste system where it's allegedly set up upon some things that krishna taught us about in the bhagavad gita 5000 years ago which was when he came according to his word to reestablish dharma dharma is your natural way how you really are your true nature krishna whenever he comes to the earth he brings forth your true nature not your false nature not your temporary nature your true nature Krishna came to reestablish the true nature of man 5000 years ago and as such he reiterated lessons that he gave to us nearly a million years ago in the form, in the age of Treta Yuga. I would like to read something to you from Quora. I'm going to read the whole thing in completeness and and then we're going to compare to see how we're going to look at India for the caste system because India's today are the leaders of the caste world in ancient Egypt you had another caste system where only the pharaohs knew how to read and only the scribes and the aristocrats knew how to read those hieroglyphs so the average person was walking around they had their own written language but it wasn't hieroglyphs i think it was called demotic egyptian so basically the pig people of ancient egypt were generally ignorant people If you wasn't in the higher classes of society, if you wasn't in the warrior class, administrator class, ruler of cl ruler class, or the priestly class, you didn't really know the science of the sun, moon, and stars. Everybody in ancient Kemet wasn't deep as you think. Most people in ancient Kemet were farmers, 
They were just scrapping for survival. They came from different parts of Africa after that end of the driest um, about 12,500 years ago, they started going to the Nile River civilization because the world had dried up. Atlantis had sunk. There was a flood and then the world had dried up. I know it's crazy, but um, we can go through those conditions again if we don't watch the stars. You got to keep your eyes on Taurus, by the way. By the way, today is today is the day, the Rohini star day. Rohini is connected to the constellation Taurus, Alpha Centauri is the eye of the bull over there in the constellation Taurus. And that biggest star is Aldebaran, I believe. Anyway, today's Rohini is a very, very powerful day. If you don't watch the stars, you're not going to know where you're standing. You're not going to know about the prophecies and predictions. So from the Srimad Bhagavatam, we have this following excerpt. In Treta Yuga, the four social orders were manifested from the universal form of the personality of Godhead. The Brahmanas appeared from the Lord's face, the Satriyas from the Lord's arms, the Vaishyas from the Lord's thighs, and the Sudras from the legs of that mighty form. Each social division was recognized by its particular duties and behavior. Remember, duties and behavior. Not who you was born to, not who you related to, not who you're friends with. Your duties activities your work and your behavior how you fundamentally are in your dharmic state the various occupational and social divisions of human society appeared according to inferior and superior natures manifest in the situation of the individual's birth you see something similar when you go get a reading in the yoruba system or in african traditional reading systems your reading will come out ire or iri as we say in jamaica or Osobo. Osobo is like a negative reading, right? So you can get a negative reading or you could get a positive reading. Same way people have a negative nature and they have a positive nature. And you can work to change those things if you want. I'll read that again. The various occupational and social divisions of human society appeared according to inferior and superior natures manifest in the situations of the individual birth. The situations of the individual's birth also apply to the conditions at the time you're born, what nakshatra you are under. So when you're born under a certain phase of the moon, let me give you an example. When it rains under a certain phase of the moon and it hits, hits certain, there's 27 phases of the moon because Chandra, Soma, the moon deity has 27 wives, okay? And those 27 wives represent a different aspect of the lunar phase for the 27 days of the month. There's a certain day of the month that when it rains, naturally on the ground, it's going to produce certain type of gems. And when it rains over certain animals, like an elephant or a snake or pearls, pearls produce, oysters produce pearls only under a certain nakshatra. So they don't produce pearls 30 days a month. You're only going to get it under a certain phase of the moon and under certain conditions. So again, how the stars are set up when you are born into this particular body will also influence the outcome of your life. It's not written in stone. It can be changed. It can be defeated. It can be overcome. It's not written in stone, but it has an influence. The stars influence you. You have an influence over the stars as well. Let's move on to the next. Peacefulness, self-control, austerity, cleanliness, satisfaction, tolerance, simple straightforwardness, devotion to me, me being Krishna, mercy and truthfulness are the natural qualities of the brahmanas. So a brahmana comes from the word bri which means to expand. When I used to work at Phoenix House, one of the counselors said to the um, clients, he said, you can lift a 300 pound weight, but you can't lift a thought. His name was Paul Williams that said that. Paul Williams said to the clients, you could lift a 300 pound weight, but you can't lift a thought. If you can't lift a thought, you are not a part of the intelligent class. I'm not calling anybody less intelligent. What I'm saying is intelligence has the power to expand because it is the second of the subtle elements. We have three subtle elements, mind, intelligence, and false ego. Your mind will not expand if you don't have the proper intelligence. So the intelligent class, class are called the Brih or the Brahmanas. Some people call them Abraham. Okay, And from Abraham, we get three Abraham religions that are destroying the world because people took it the wrong way, just like Varna Ashram, just like the caste system is being taken the wrong way. 
Dynamic power, bodily strength, determination, heroism, tolerance, generosity, great endeavor, steadiness, devotion to the brahmanas and leadership are the natural qualities of his satriyas. Satriya comes from the word ksha. Ksha means to strike or to harm someone. And tre comes from triate, which means to deliver. So a ksatriya is a person who delivers you from harm. Your president is supposed to deliver you from harm. He's not supposed to shut down the government whimsically when people got bills to pay. You know what I'm saying? People got bills, light bills, phone bill, cable bill, sex bill, whatever bill. You got bills to pay. Your boy wants to shut down the government because he's not a protector. He is not a satria. Satria is supposed to ride out in front of the enemy and meet the enemy head on. He doesn't send your sons and daughters to die. So this government you have, and this for those Hare Krishnas listening too, you know what I'm saying? Because there's a few of y'all that support President Trump. If you can support Trump, then you have no place in the golden age. You know what I'm saying? Lord Kalki needs to take you out of here with the rest of the mud. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no way you can support an evil man like Trump. And then you want to pick up some Joppa beads and chant Hare Krishna and go tell the world what way they supposed to live. And you're voting for men who are demons in the flesh. And I'm speaking to a particular person. You know what I'm saying? That particular Hare Krishna, you know who you are, dude. You know what I'm saying? And your time is coming. You know, everything has its time under the sun, moon and stars. You know exactly who you are, dude. You know what I'm saying? You're a racist and you're an animal. And I don't even want to go further into you. Um, hmm. so a satria is going to protect you. He's going to deliver you from bodily harm. This, the only way you could collect taxes from somebody is if they're employed, right? So everybody got to have a job. Everybody got to be strong. Everybody got to eat. Everybody got to get a good material and spiritual education. That's what your government is supposed to do. Not like this Betsy DeVos lady. She knows nothing about education. Ben Carson knows nothing about housing. None of these people are qualified administrators. That's why when I see the U.S. government, it's not that I'm some subversive force. I want this government to fall because it's a farce. It's a farce for everything decent in human society. We used to be the leaders of environmental protection. Now you could barely find clean drinking water in our schools. Let's not even go into that, right? Faith invade next. Faith in Vedic civilization, dedication to charity, freedom from hypocrisy, service to the brahmanas, and perpetually desiring to accumulate more money are the natural qualities of the Vaishyas. So the Vaishya is the creative class. They generally are agriculturalists because they grow things from the ground. They feed society. So as, as you start to see, there's an intelligent class, then there's a muscle class, and then there's a creative class that things keeps things flowing, right? And those are the Vaishyas, the cow protectors, agriculturalists, businessmen, they make sure that money makes the world go round. Family people, you know what I mean? And then here's the attributes of the Shudra. Service without duplicity to the Brahmanas, cows, demigods, and other worshipable personalities and complete satisfaction with whatever income is obtained in such service are the natural qualities of the Shudras. Stop. Now let's compare to the caste system. How do they have the caste system set up in India today? If you're a sudra, you got to go clean toilets and sewers. You got to move dead bodies. You got to do all of the undesirable, detestable work for the other three classes of society. However, what Krishna said right here was something totally different. He said, service without duplicity to the brahmanas, cows, demigods, and other worshipable personalities. Pause. Stop right there. You're supposed to be serving the intelligent class. It doesn't say anything about being a slave for the Khatriya. It doesn't say anything about being a slave for the Vaisha. It says specifically service without duplicity to the intelligent class, those who cause growth. Service to the cows, demigods, the Elohim, the Anunnaki, whatever you call them, and other worshipable personalities. So the first thing about service is that the personality must be worshipable, all right? If a person is not worshipable, they don't deserve your service, all right? Whether you're a sudra or whatever you are. Let's keep going. There's another class. There's an outcast now, outcast civilization. Who are they? Let's see their attributes. Dirtiness, dishonesty, thievery, faithlessness, useless quarrel. Useless quarrel, arguing over nothing. 
lust, anger, and hankering. You always want it. You always desire it. You can't sit your butt down and be satisfied. You always want to do this. You always want to do that. Anger and hankering constitute the nature of those in the lowest position outside of the Varnashrama system. Nonviolence, truthfulness, honesty, desire for the happiness and welfare of all others, and freedom from lust, anger, and greed constitute duties for all members of society. So if you are a member of the four orders of Varna Ashram, it's nonviolence is incumbent upon you. Truthfulness, honesty, desire for the happiness and welfare of all others, and freedom from lust, anger, and greed constitute duties for all members of society. So those things are for people who are not outcasts. Outcasts in the old days were called Malechas and Yavanas. And those were the founders of your Greek and Turkish civilization, the modern European. Now this is scientific that the modern European only came upon this earth after the end of the younger Dryas period. So once we started encountering barbarian types of men, was only after 12,000 years ago, 12,900 years ago. <laughs> Before that civilization was more advanced, you had your Lemuria, you had your Atlantis, you had Kumari Kandam. People were of a much greater stature. People were more healthy mentally, physically, spiritually. So you didn't have low class savages running around molesting the flesh of other living entities. You know, as a matter of fact, when you go to a lot of those dinosaur graveyards now and mammoths, they're finding out that a lot of the bones have been gnawed, gnawed, you know, and you're crushing like how I used to eat chicken. When I used to eat chicken, Jamaicans would tell me, don't eat it to the bone, you know, because it looked bad. You know, you look like you're hungry. Me, I would eat off the gristle. I would eat off the sinews, whatever. As long as it's a part of the chicken, I would eat it and I would leave the bone. Some people go further to crush the bone with its teeth and suck out the marrow. What we find is that in ancient civilization, sometime after the fallen angels were on this planet Earth and they began to defile the flesh of man and the bodies of other animals, we see evidence of bones where they were crushed, cracked, gnawed. Okay, so that's the animal civilization and their descendants are the barbarians, the Yavanas and Malechas, who also have Denisovan blood in them, Denisovan DNA. Basically, everybody who left Africa started mixing with these other savage races. All right. This, I mean, this is the genetic evidence. You could take it or you could leave it, but it all pans out. Varna Ashram is a color code. So there's been a color code assigned to this. And unfortunately, Srila Prabhupada took this color code and made it in a way where it was hardly discernible from a racial concept. Because in so many words, he basically said that blacks are sudras and that whites are Brahmins. And when you see the Bhagavad Gita, the 16th chapter, and you read the nature of the divine and the demoniac people, there's a disconnect between what Prabhupada was teaching about the Varna Ashram and how Krishna described living entities. Krishna described the demons in chapter 16, and you go and read it, and you match it up to see who's really who on this planet Earth. So Varna Ashram is a color code. And it's supposed to be a symbolic color code because the Brahmins in South India are blacker than me. So it's not really supposed to be based on race. But, you know, again, Prabhupada was a culture, a product of his culture and his time and his education, unfortunately. And if you're going to um, have some peace in your heart, you're going to have to find some balance, some way to move on from the negative aspects of what Srila Prabhupada had to offer and actually decipher the truth for yourself. You don't have a choice. He didn't leave. He left you with the bag. Whatever was in that bag, you got to take it out. You got to throw out the garbage and you got to keep the good stuff and make a meal out of it. So that's what I've decided to do, to do with my life. You know what I'm saying? All glory to he who taught me the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I just like to say that the way Krishna established things was for everything to flow smoothly. He didn't intend for this to be a degraded caste system where you get your blessings by birth and another man perpetually him and his children, they have to clean the sewer. They have to clean the sewer just because he was born to a particular man. It doesn't work like that because a lawyer is not born as a lawyer. A doctor is not born as a doctor. And some of those homeless people you see on the subway, they didn't, they wasn't born dirty. 
They wasn't born mentally ill. They wasn't born with a plan to go live on a subway. You know what I mean? So your nature, whatever you cultivate in life, that determines your varna and your ashram. That's why you got a lot of Moors. They say they ain't black. They don't want to be associated with black. Black has a negative connotation. I can't even blame them, especially when you read Srila Prabhupada's literature. Black has a negative connotation, yet they worship a black god. I'm like, I'm like, you know, everybody wake up, do the right thing, study Varna Ashram and compare it to the caste system as they have in India. India is hopeless right now. As a matter of fact, they're about to bring in the mark of the beast. They're polluting their rivers. As far as I'm concerned, there's no Brahmins in India. There's no Satriyas in India, no Vaishas, no Sudras. Everyone has become like an outcast. And what's even worse, they're following the Western ways. They can't even see. See, I'm sitting in America. I watch Dr. Mumbi. I watch her compare Africa and Asia and North and South America. I can see America is clearly done. People are exiting Trump's camp left and right. There will be no government. He's going to have to do it all himself in January. America is falling. Why would you Indian people want to be like American? Why would you Africans want to be like Americans? This is the bastard of all civilization. This civilization is created of iron and clay. Iron and clay cannot naturally meld together. So it's going to fall apart. So that's what we're living through. Everything's falling apart. Year 2019 is coming. I hope that that's a year of fulfillment of prophecy. People find out what Varna and Ashram you belong to so that you won't have one man in the wrong position doing a great job. It's worse for a man to be in the wrong position and do a great job. It's better for him to be in his real position and do a bad job because at least it's like electrons on a motherboard. You know what I mean? Electrons only flow on a motherboard when the connection is clear, stable, and it's going through the right materials. So again, Varna Ashram was given to us in Treta Yuga when man was more pure, but he had started to get ready to fall. And Krishna was like, yo, let me separate people according to their natures. And I want to share one last thing with you. OK, it's been a while since I heard this, but I want to see if I could quote it correctly. In the golden age, Satya Yuga, the demons and the devotees lived on different planets, different star systems, different galaxies. In the next age, which was Treta Yuga, when Varna Ashram was given to the human race, we find that the demons and the devotees were living in the same star system, same planet. And then in the next age, which was Dwapar Yuga, when Krishna came, you had demons and devotees being born in the same family. Like Kansa was related, Kamsa was related to Krishna and Akrora. All of these people were related, but some were divine and some were demoniac. And then in this age of Kali Yuga, the demon and the devotee are born, unfortunately, in the same body. So you see how the negativity encroaches upon us and becomes a part of us in the age of Kali. And there's only one hope in the age of Kali, according to prophecies and predictions in the Vedic system. He said to chant the holy names of the Lord in the last days and times. It's the only means of deliverance, only means of deliverance, only way. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Again, study the caste system versus Varnashram and try to make sense out of it for yourself. Hare Bol.